Yeah, I mean, like every year Jay Wright would kind of say that he would think about retiring the last couple of years, but to do it at 60. And, and the thing with Jay is he's 60, but he, he looks like he's 50. So everybody who kind of thinks about it right now, they're thinking of Jay Wright as 50 years old, only a couple years removed now. I mean, they went to the Final Four this year, and they've won two titles in the last six years. So he is retiring at the top of his game, and he's doing it, honestly, because he's worn down. He's worn down. He wants to spend more time with the family. Uh, he's a guy who didn't go the route of the transfer portal very much, and he didn't want to. He's a guy who hasn't had to deal with the NIL very much. And now you're talking about when you're getting, you know, top 50 players, you got to figure out the NIL. I, I think it's, it's a combination from the people that I've talked to right now of it's the right time for Jay Wright at 60 years old, spend more time with his kids, spend more time with his wife, spend more time on the beach and, and unwind because right now college basketball, we talked about this earlier, Rob, it has changed so much in the last year. And I think a lot of coaches are going to – guys getting older. You know, I saw Kay, Kay's here tonight. Roy admitted it sped up the process for Roy Williams a little bit. I think everything sped up the process for Jay Wright. Yeah, it's it's one thing I talked with a coach that just got um, – he's a first-time head coach today. And he basically said to me, look, this is a 24-7, 365, full-time, nonstop gig. And it's something where uh, you can't you can't just – you know, you can't just – Go and golf all of April and May, and and it's a grind. Fanta, uh, I'm going to go to you on this. Can you just kind of put this in perspective a little bit for us uh, when it comes to the Big East, when it comes to – I mean, you know that conference better than anybody. What does this mean for the conference as a whole? Well, Jay Wright and, is and on real, – Real quick before you say something, Goodman, when you, when you jump off the Zoom, it messes up the video feed. So if you could just give us five minutes, five minutes without answering a text. Jay Wright is on the Big East Mount Rushmore. Without question. He carried the torch for the league during a period in which many doubted the conference and questioned the conference, including Jay Wright. He said during the NCAA tournament that when the Big East reconfigured and when the reconfigured league revved up in 2013-14 with Xavier Butler and Creighton joining that, that Catholic 7 alignment, there were columns, countless columns, countless narratives, people around the sport of college basketball who said, you don't have football. You're not surviving in the current climate of college sports. The Big East has been a good league, a quality league, since it reconfigured. Jay Wright got it a seat at the big boy table by making Final Fours and by producing two national championships in three years. And frankly, there will never be another at Villanova. He is the greatest of all time at Villanova University. He is Villanova basketball. And what I think that this signified is everything that he poured into it. The fact that he was inducted into the Hall of Fame last September, he's already accomplished a Hall of Fame career. He's not retiring and then going back into coaching next year or in two years or in three years. The NBA has called countless times. Jay Wright has had many occurrences where he could have jumped to the NBA. He stayed home at Villanova. He stayed home at this small Catholic school outside of Philadelphia and built up the winningest program in college basketball over the last decade. This decision weighed on him. It took time to reach this point. He didn't just wake up and say, I'm retiring. But tonight, the night that this news breaks, it is the end of an all-time coaching era. And what does it mean for the Big East? He was the dean of that league. It certainly is a, it's a huge loss, not just for that league, but guys, and Jeff, you know this, when we talk about faces of college basketball, mm -hmm. Jay Wright is one of the guys that you said going into next year, when there are things happening in the sport of college basketball, Jay Wright's going to be asked about them because he is highly regarded and respected. And here's the thing. All that change, that weighed on Jay. He's tired. He didn't want to deal with it anymore. He didn't want to deal with that, fam. He's exhausted. That's the thing. That's the thing is a lot. Listen, I, I just got done talking with Coach K pregame, and, and he said, we talked about the direction, that there is no direction 
for college basketball. And a lot of these coaches that have been doing it for a long time, you and I have been arguing with this. You say that the game is in a great spot. I, I, I would fight back. I would push back on that. And I think a lot of the veteran head coaches would agree with me. The game is not in a great spot right now. There's still a lot to be figured out. And I think Jay Wright felt like it is wearing him down, dealing with the transfer portal, dealing with trying to figure out whether they need to get a collective for Villanova to be able to get any players. So mm -hmm. I, I just think, honestly, and he's 60. He's 60. I know he looks 50. He's 60 years yeah. old. And a lot of guys, listen, there are some guys that retire at a time when they can enjoy for 15, 20, 25 years. He can, he can travel and see his kids. They're all out of college now. I, right. You know, the one misnomer always, and I talked to Jay about this years ago, he did have an itch to coach in the NBA. He did. And, and he almost took the Sixers job. They wanted him. He almost took it. But he, he scratched that itch with the Olympic team. And I think he realized then he, he doesn't want to coach in the NBA. He, he doesn't want to. He's dealing with elite level kids at Villanova that listen to him. Well, here's the thing. I just want to counter to this for a second. So I'm not saying that there aren't issues in college basketball. There are things that have to be figured out. NIL and everything that comes with it with the collectives. We could go on and on about everything that comes with it. There's a lack of clarity in that space right now, and there's a lot to be figured out. My point is it's a changing time in college basketball. But you would agree, if you're giving the thought of it's killing college basketball, college basketball is getting killed, that's not fair. That's not fair. The television ratings in March would argue otherwise. The storyline of Oscar Sheepway saying he's coming back to Kentucky, there's not Oscar he Sheepway's walking through the door every day. My point is, Jay Wright had nothing left to prove, guys. He's proven it all. He's won at the highest level. He's put together a winning era that, that spans years and years. He didn't want to go through any more of the changes that are happening. He got tired of it. He wants you to know spend what time is, with so, his three children yeah. and wife. He's got great balance. That's the one thing with Jay Wright over the last 10 years or so, maybe maybe six or seven. He's got great balance. This is not a guy who's like Tom Izzo, who has to mm -hmm. be out on the road every single day, who's got to be on the phone every single day. Now, he's not Mark Few either, but he's got much better balance than most coaches. And every time I talk to Jay, honestly, a lot of it would be about his kids, his, his kids and his boys who are now older and his daughter who's out of college and his wife was always with him. And, and again, I, I just think I think it's a combination of saying it's time. And you know what? This new college basketball sped it up, sped up the time. Yeah, it's it's a changing landscape, and and Jeff, we talked about this on the the Sheway stream earlier, and I don't think we necessarily need to go all the way back into it, but it's with NIL coming at the same time as the transfer portal is a thing coming at the same time as you have guys getting six years, you have all these guys being immediately eligible. It's the the changing landscape of everything happening at once makes it so that if you are a coach that has a work life balance it's not going to be something that that you have to have you, you have to be a grinder 24 7 365 to make it work in this day and age until we really find the new normal when it comes to the transfer portal on the nil